First, though, our guest. With 9 million followers and almost 200 million YouTube views, our next guest is one of the UK's most popular mummy vloggers and Britain's biggest mumfluencer. And with five best-selling novels under her belt, she's here to tell us all about her latest one. Please welcome Louise Pentland. <laughs> I had to borrow it because I forgot my own. <laughs> I forgot your perfume. Yes, I borrowed uh, someone else's. That's it. Thank great. You. <laughs> <laughs> so, welcome. Oh no, you forgot the horrible oh, chair. Oh, chair. It's not me. <laughs> got that look. The chair. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but the Stop best here. She's I won't very move. nervous. I won't move. <laughs> Only you, Louise. <laughs> it was the bean. Oh dear. Because I know you're a massive fan of Loose Women. Yeah, um, But you believe that you've kind of manifested yourself onto the show. Because last time you were in the building, you were like, I want to be on Loose Women. Yes. So I love the show. I watched the show. And I was like, I came on just before lockdown. I thought, this is for me. <laughs> and so then I got really into the law of attraction and crystals and the full moon and the new moon. So I've been getting my crystals out every full moon and writing, like, my goals. And Loose Women is on there that I'd love to do. So I was like... Thanks, universe. Thanks, crystals. And, you know, your great booking team, but also the crystals. <laughs> so I'll be getting my crystals out tonight as well. I'll be like, thanks for that. More I'm getting mine that. out for the lottery, yeah. then, if it worked for you. Oh, just, you know, in the last year, so many things have worked. I could talk about this for ages, but so many things have worked because of manifesting and law of attraction and, like, changing your attitude and having this, like, really positive, like, vibration. When you say like, manifesting, for those yeah. of us not in the know, yeah. do you literally sit imagining yourself doing whatever sort it is you want to do? Of. Yeah, so it's about putting into the universe what you really hope for and what you really wish for. And, you know, if you've got a faith, you might call it praying. Mm. Um, if you... You might call it positive thinking. But manifesting, there's all sorts of different ways you can do it, and I'm by no means an expert. But I just visualise what I'd really like to happen, and I think about how I would feel when that happens and how everyone else would and feel. And see yourself and there. And I see myself there and what I would wear and what it would smell like and every little aspect of it, and then I, I think it's going to happen. So you have to tell yourself it's going and to happen. And here you are. Yeah, yeah, so there's something you want, and it's going to in happen. In dressing room 22. 22, which is one of my special numbers, yeah. Oh. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. I am manifesting George Clooney as I sit there. <laughs> yeah. You've got to imagine him. Yeah. Oh, I am imagining what him. What does he smell like? <laughs> yeah. 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 Imagine exactly what you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, I've just manifested your book from under the desk <laughs> here. Um, Louise Pentland, Time After Time. This is your sixth yes. novel. sixth book. Um, wow. And interestingly, the theme... Well, one of the themes in, in the book is am I doing enough? Am I yeah. enough? Am I being enough? Do you often think that about yes. you and your life? I don't know anybody really well that thinks I am amazing, I'm doing so much. I think even if you're absolutely smashing it, there's still parts of yourself that you think, is this good enough? And deep down, that imposter syndrome creeps in. Mm. So Tabby, the main character, she's always worried that she's not doing enough. And then this whole like whirlwind life event happens around her. Um, and you'll see what she discovers at the end. But it's a really nice holiday summer read with like feel good vibes and then a little touch on some harder topics like grief um and she smashes the tv up in one chapter uh -huh. yeah <laughs> i did have covid whilst i wrote some of this so <laughs> it's a little bit fever dreamy in some places but i think that adds a certain je ne sais quoi mm. to it yeah. and you, we were saying earlier you got in very very early on the the kind of blogging and vlogging and because yeah. we were ruth and i were saying you know back in the day we were like oh my god what, what is this what blogging is and vlogging? We don't really understand it and yeah. just sort of kind of, like, didn't do any of it. And uh, what was it about it that drew you to it? I thought it looked really exciting. So I was the world's worst receptionist <laughs> to Barry. If you're watching Barry, I'm still sorry. I'm still sorry. <laughs> um, and whilst I was working very hard, I would read other people's blogs on company time. And I was like, I could write a blog. So I thought, I'll write a blog. And then it absolutely blew up. Mega famous, 35 readers. But you say and that. <laughs> you say that, but what was the content? What was the... So I had just bought a fixer-upper house and I thought, I'll document this house. Right. Uh, which turned out to be incredibly boring because I was all I was doing was painting walls. <laughs> so I quickly changed it to a bit more lifestyle. Um, and then someone said, you should make a video about what you're writing about. I was like, give it a bash. Mm. And so I did, and it went, well, <laughs> here I am ten mm. years later, but I really love it. And would you have it. ever have imagined 
when you started that little vlog, blog, whatever they called it, that, you know, however many years later, you've got no. nine million followers and... and six billion books, squillion or... people on YouTube following every coffin spit of your life. No, I feel so lucky that this is my life. I often think, like, when is anyone going to notice that this I should probably still be the world's worst reception? Does that not come with a pressure, though, as mm. well? Yes, but... The pros of this job, I think, for me anyway, far outweigh that pressure. And because I've been doing it so long, I've sort of got used to having the right boundaries for it. So I think some people think that I share everything, but you know what it's like, because you mm. all have social media as well. You've got to have your personal boundaries. So there's a lot that we don't share. There's a lot of like my relationship with Liam I don't share, or a lot of the children's lives. But then the stuff we do share is just a lot of fun. And you just get used to it, kind of like I think, is it a lot of pressure to what sit here? What about trolling? Do you get trolled? How do you deal with people that aren't so yeah. nice? You do. I think once you make it to a certain level on the internet, it comes with it. It shouldn't, but it does. Um, for the most part, I will ignore it. And I'm pretty cutthroat. Like, if something's gone too far, I will just call the police because it is actually a crime. Some of the things people do is actually a criminal offence. So I will just call the police and start down that road. And this, um, time after time, <coughs> you do a bit of time travel. Was that part of your COVID feverish <laughs> <laughs> back so, to the 80s? It was planned, the time travel element, but having a COVID fever did really help the imagination for that. <laughs> that made it exciting. So... My mum died when I was seven, and I have often thought, what would it be like if I could go back and have one more conversation? Like, if I could mm. go back to when she was alive and healthy, what would I say? How would mm. that be? And me as an adult going back, what would it be like to be friends with her as a woman? Um, and so that kind of inspired the idea of, what if you could go back and have a conversation? And I won't spoil who she has her conversation yeah. with, but um, that was... That is, I mean, that's, that, that could be a Lucerne topic. You know, yeah. If we could go God. back. Oh, I'd know, cry. We would I'd, we I'd have just it. be a mess. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Louise, we haven't got we never enough time. We never have enough no. time. But listen, we're glad you manifested your way Thank onto you. Lucerne <laughs> and it worked. Uh, Louise's book, uh, her sixth novel, Time After Time, uh, comes out on Thursday. Yes. Yeah. Thank, uh, thank you. you very much, Louise. Thank <laughs> Now, I hope, I hope this means that you put us on your Instagram, you know, up our followers. <laughs> well, get a nice picture, I'll tag you all. Yeah, tag yeah, all yeah, in, yeah. the stuff they do, tagging and stuff. Thank you very much. <laughs>